Now we're live. I didn't make We'll begin in a few minutes. Yeah, that's when I install it. And I didn't expect this at all. Uh, I don't think anybody did. Um, but we're definitely making the most of it. It's, it's um, bringing everyone together in a weird way because the circumstances are the ones that everyone else is dealing with and everyone's trying to adapt. And it's a matter of just understanding that um, we're all dealing with the similar struggles of like trying to stay cre creative or trying to be productive. like. I feel like emotionally and mentally, even physically, like we're experiencing a lot of the same things and it's a really weird, but nice unifying experience to be a part of. Well, I think there was definitely a couple weeks of adjustment to at least let the shock wear off. Um, you know, it, it was right at the end of winter quarter that we got the announcement that spring would continue remotely. And then when this situation happened, we first we didn't know what, what it was going to be. And then we got told, OK, we're going to have a virtual show. Um, and so I was hoping that perhaps we could just push off the show until it was safe to return again. But in all these times of uncertainty, I think it's best to really just like go for it and make the best of the situation. Uh, usually I'm either at the art department or in my room in many ways just working on things. But uh, I do feel that difference from not being able to be in the wood shop constantly or not being able to be outside and work on things outdoors mainly. It's been crazy. I mean, I still can't believe it even. <laughs> Sucks, but um, it'll be okay. And there's going to be lots of new things that I'm going to learn um, this quarter about, about making work in a very small space and, and really making work um, in a really different, you know, situation where I'm, I can't leave my house really, and I'm like, very limited to like my own personal space, and um, and just kind of, and also this virtual gallery I think is a really cool opportunity to just, um, you know, showcase work online. You know. In this episode, we find ourselves still sheltering in place due to COVID-19 restrictions and without access to classrooms, offices, or numerous essential tools. We're on Zoom a lot these days, and these interviews were conducted on that platform and by cell phone. 
Students have had to quickly shift to remote learning and virtual ways to present their work. And this year's outstanding Irwin scholars are no exception. The Irwin exhibition usually includes a highly anticipated and publicized group show in the Mary Porter Cezanne Art Gallery. However, this year's exhibition will not be taking place in the usual way. After much deliberation, the 13 outstanding award-winning students have decided to go forward and forge new territory by producing their show using a cutting edge 3D modeling tool called SketchUp, which will allow online visitors to enjoy their show virtually and in a groundbreaking innovative way. Appropriately called Collective Solitude, this year's exhibition features artists whose works speak to this extraordinary period in history, characterized by tremendous isolation and yet also incredible communal action. In this episode, eight of the artists and their mentors talk about their experiences. My name is Shelby. We'll be getting started shortly, everyone. Starting with gallery director Shelby Graham. This year gets better. You know, we'll be starting shortly, but I just wanted to let you know you've been listening to the Irwin Scholars podcast that was created by Maureen Harrison of the UC Santa Cruz Arts Division. And we'll have a link to the full 40 minute podcast on our website. And we'll also play uh, more of that podcast at the end of our program. Um, and I, I think I might um, just begin with some details, um, just the back of house details. And then we'll take a moment to make sure everyone can have a link. But before we begin our evening, I'd like to share just a few details about the event program. Uh, so our event is being recorded tonight and will be available on the Cezanne Gallery uh, YouTube channel. Also, the chat is open, as many of you already have found. Uh, the chat is open for comments and we'll be sharing links to our virtual exhibition and please use the Q&A tool to ask questions throughout our evening and we will do our best to field questions as they come in. And we'll also leave time at the end uh, for Q&A. Um, and so I, I, we're just gonna wait just maybe one more minute just to see if um, everyone has the link to get on, if um, uh, people can go to sesnon at ucsc.edu um, if they need help with the, with the link, but we'll just um, yeah, just sit uh, for a minute. I just, um, before we start, I'd like to take a moment for a collective breath to acknowledge the tragic murder of George Floyd by police and to pay our respect for his life and stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter and for change. We have a lot of work to do. So we'll just take a, a big collective breath together while we wait. Well, hello and welcome. Good evening. I wanted to just thank you all. Thank you all for joining us for the 34th anniversary of the Irwin Scholars Exhibition and the first ever you know, virtual award ceremony and launch of our 3D model. My name is Shelby Graham and I'm the gallery director here at the Mary Porter Cezanne Art Gallery at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about student success. 
um, because I feel educational institutions um, have a responsibility to, to work for change and to lead change. Um, so tonight we're gonna listen. We're gonna listen and celebrate our Irwin scholars and who are truly trailblazers. I know there are many other events going on tonight. In fact, yeah, there, there's so many things happening tonight. I wanted to thank you all for taking time to celebrate our scholars. Our program will look like this. Uh, we'll share the virtual gallery, which is just awesome. Uh, we'll show you again how to navigate our website. And then um, I'll introduce the Interim Dean of the Arts, Ted Warburton, and then Professor Melissa Gwynn, our faculty advisor from the Art Department, will congratulate the Irwin Scholars. And everyone, all the scholars will have a chance um, to speak, and then we'll have a Q&A. And the Cezanne Gallery is a proud producer of the Irwin Scholars exhibition every year. But this year, as we all know, the Irwin Scholars of 2020 have faced enormous challenges uh, from all our recent crises, including the COVID-19 pandemic with shelter in place, uh, orders, we have had educational upheaval, we've had social injustices, economic disruption, and personal hardships. You'll see powerful themes presented tonight from all of our um, students in an exhibition called Collective Solitude, and they raise relevant contemporary issues. These artists have worked independently and came together as a collaborative group um, questioning the boundaries of isolation and connectivity. I'm humbled, really, by the Irwin Scholars' determination. So thank you all, Irwin Scholars. This is the time when everyone can clap. And um, So thank you, Irwin Scholars, particularly this year and displaying on the 3D model. And we wanted to go above and beyond this slideshow. So remember to add your Q&A, because our wonderful Louise Leong is going to moderate our our Q&A, and I just want to thank Louise Leong. This exhibition would not have been so organized without Louise's help. Our, she's our gallery manager and museum preparator. Uh, she scheduled weekly Zoom check-ins, virtual studio visits, and she kept everyone updated with a positive note. Uh, thank you, and I just have a few more thank yous. Uh, let me tell you the history of the Irwin Award. You might be wondering, this wonderful scholarship is called the Susan Benteen and William Hyde Irwin Scholarship, and it's granted annually to undergraduate UCSC students for their proven excellence in the arts. The students are nominated by the faculty, uh, and then they have to submit a portfolio, very rigorous, and then they're uh, selected by an all faculty vote. This professionally organized exhibition for us um, has been a, really, a real tradition, for, both for the gallery and for the art department. We love working with the scholars every year, and we learned something new. And you can imagine how many new things we learned this year. Um, but here's the background on the Irwin family. Susan Irwin uh, was a San Lorenzo Valley resident, and that is in the hills here in Santa Cruz. Um, and she was also a San Francisco arts community member and also taught at San Francisco State University. She wanted others to have a thriving arts community. And so she created this fund in 1986 with a modest donation and the endowment has now grown to over $1 million. And it generates these 12 to 13 merit scholarships plus Irwin grants for all of our, Irwin, uh, all of our art students. Any art student can apply for an Irwin grant as well um, for, to work on their work. And this scholarship shows the far reaching effects of the support for the arts. So thank you to the Irwin family. Also, we'd like to thank the Arts Division, the Art Department, and University Relations, who are behind the scene, um, along with the uh, Arts Events Office, um, sponsoring this exhibition and event webinar tonight. I hope this year we can reconnect with many families and alumni scholars. I know a lot of you are joining in because I saw your name, um, so please stay in touch with us. And before I turn the program over to Dean Warburton. I want to thank the person who's responsible for the actual creation of the virtual model, and that is Colleen Jennings. So we're going to share with you the model. And Colleen Gen Jennings is our digital arts coordinator for the arts division, and she made this model and has been filling it with art every day. And because we're building the model at the same time the scholars were making the work, it was a generative process. 
and we were able to add more display space. Okay, here we go. Number one, you see Morgan's work right next to the title page. And then we go on to number two, Jocelyn Lee, um, and we got rid of the desk. And there we have Dominic Ramirez. In, in the back um, gallery, along with Chloe Murr. And please click on these links. Here's a fabulous link of Chloe's installation out in the field here at UC Santa Cruz. So all, anytime there's a 3D element, you have to link um, either to a new page, but it's really worth it. So I want you to uh, be able to do that. Also, um, Chloe has some fabulous work in the main gallery. And then um, we move uh, again to Dominic Ramirez. This is um, a larger painting. Then uh, Joshua Zupan, uh, you, you can see it, and you can still see the structure of the gallery. And there's Morgan Tompler. Uh, and here it takes time, but I would love for you to click on this link of her handmade book. It is so precious. Uh, it has um, a video of turning the pages. And I really want you to take time to look at this. This is um, just a pre-recorded video, uh, and we'll have this also uploaded to our website. Uh, since this was a generative model, um, Colleen was able to add space uh, inside and out, and we, we could join all three of our galleries together on one floor and make the flow from artist to artist in a cohesive manner. Thank you, Colleen. So as you can see, here's Rodrigo Ramos, and we were able to put his t-shirts, and here's uh, Anastasia Olison, and this is the three-dimensional link that I was talking about. Please take time to look at this fantastic sculpture in the round. Um, it's really exciting. Um, this is new technology. Also then, this is the um, next room, Edgar Cruz. You could see the cyanotypes and he collaborated with Natalie uh, Del Castillo. And um, then we jumped to the faculty gallery with Angel, uh, Angel Gonzalez and also Jocelyn Lee. Uh, you could see we, we saved the space. Here's Emma, Emma's work in here. Uh, and then also on the other wall, we have Angel. Gonzalez, and we're able to show Barisha's fabulous three-dimensional um, signs, and you must just click on that link to get this full three-dimensional view. Um, it's really um, been a, a fabulous uh, experience. We have the outside wall now, Chloe Murr, with a full mural, and then we have another outside sculpture by Barish. And it, um, take time to look at this. We were, this was a sculpture she made earlier, and now it's in this fabulous 3D model. So thank you, Colleen. Um, and now we're gonna come to Erin, um, I'm pretty sure, and take time, because this is a quick shot of Erin's. I know, we'll have to go back to Erin's. I knew that was gonna be too quick. Erin, uh, I wanna just say that Erin Martinez uh, designed our catalog, and we are, um, anyway, we are, um, going to share this catalog with you, um, uh, but it's still in the works. So the next person I want to thank um, is also mentioned Rodrigo Ramos, and he um, worked on the postcard design and the poster. So all students work on this. This has really been uh, a fabulous collaborative process. And Colleen, when, when she started working with SketchUp and then SketchFab, um, everything became magic. And thank you to Scotty Brookie from IT for allowing Colleen to work on that model. Uh, also, I want to thank all the Irwin, um, excuse me, the Cezanon interns who have all been supporting us remotely. And that is Barish Blackwell, also who is an Irwin scholar. Ava Christie is our uh, COIP intern. Natalie uh, Serafian, uh, Tori Cruz, Jesus Martinez, and Davidra Jackson. I want to shout out to V in LA. Thank you. Um, today, museums and galleries really want leaders uh, who are artists to create community. And look at what you've done, Erwin Scholars. You've created this fabulous community for all of us to appreciate the arts um, and the Cezanne Gallery. And on that note, I would like to introduce our Interim Dean of the Arts, Ted Warburton, Professor of Dance and Theater Arts Department. Ted received his early training at the North Carolina School of the Arts, and um, he danced professionally with American Ballet Theater, Houston Ballet, and Boston Ballet. 
His interest in dance, cognition, and creativity began when studying for a doctorate in human development and psychology at Harvard University. Most recently, in 2019, Ted became the inaugural senior research fellow at the Arnhold Institute for Dance Education at Columbia University. Please welcome our wonderful interim dean of the arts, Ted Warburton. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you, Shelby. I'm delighted to join the Mary Porter Sesnon Art Gallery's virtual opening of Irwin Scholars 2020. Congratulations, Irwin Scholars. Before I begin my remarks, I would also like to acknowledge the very challenging events of the past several weeks. I ask that we take a moment in silence to sit in solidarity with our Black students, faculty, staff, and alumni, our African, Black, Caribbean, and Indigenous communities, and colleagues of color who are really hurting right now, and who ask us to reflect on our role in creating anti-racist education that seeks to dismantle systems and structures of oppression, even as we work toward increasing social mobility for everyone in a more equitable and just society. So a moment of silence, please. Thank you. The themes addressed by this exhibition, Collective Solitude, raise important issues and contribute to necessary conversations that are taking place on our campus and throughout our communities. It's been almost three months since the implementation of Santa Cruz County's shelter in place order due to the coronavirus. In that time, much has changed in the world, in our broader community, at UC Santa Cruz, and here in the arts. But what has not changed is the tireless effort from so many on behalf of our students. I want to especially appreciate the student artists and interns who have been working remotely. Students are why, are we are, why we're here, and they remind us how we can respond creatively to our rapidly changing world. As Shelby mentioned, I also want to recognize Louise Leong, our gallery manager. Even as I speak, She's working alongside the Arts Events Office to make sure that this webinar runs smoothly. Thank you so much. And of course, a big thank you to Colleen Jennings, our Digital Art Technical Coordinator for the Arts Division and a recent UCSC alum who built this incredible virtual model for this stunning exhibition. Thank you so much, Colleen. Finally, I thank all of our students, our professors, our staff and families who have supported this exhibition. It's such a pleasure to have partners on and off campus that care as much about the arts as we do here at UC Santa Cruz and the Cessnon Gallery. So now I'm gonna turn this over to Melissa Gwynn. Melissa is Associate Professor of Art and Faculty Advisor for this fantastic exhibition. Melissa received her MFA from Yale and enjoys a successful career with solo art shows at galleries in New York and beyond group exhibitions in London, Miami, New York, and elsewhere. Her work has been reviewed in Art Forum, Time Out New York, Village Voice, Art News, and the New York Times. She's presented her work at the University of Southern California, UC Davis, Carnegie Mellon, the Tang Museum, San Francisco Art Institute, and other institutions. A truly impressive person, Melissa. Please welcome Melissa Gwen. Thank you so much, I Dean. <laughs> I'm really pleased to be here to comment on these artists' manifest talent and visual art. Their collective ability is so impressive. And like all students at UC Santa Cruz, the Irwin Fellows acquired unusual skills this spring that are not yet visible. Only time will reveal how those skills will affect their art. These scholars were in their final year of university and had worked tirelessly in their studio classes. They were selected from a large pool of impressive artists in the art department. And you'll know what I mean when you visit this spring's open studios on the art department website, and I hope you will. I must present a timeline. In early February, each scholar was notified 
with a big yes in the form of an Irwin Fellowship, an invitation to display their work in the Sassanon Gallery. That good news must have accelerated their creative productivity. By mid-February, the cohort was issued an invitation to meet in the gallery after spring break to collaborate on the design of their exhibition. No doubt, the happy energy of that palpable yes was multiplied by 15, oops, by 13. But a different reality, an invisible no, if you will, was spreading. By mid-March, our students, university, and all public spaces were forced to close. Despite a sense of doom, the power of yes still lingered within these artists as they tried to organize an in-person gathering to brainstorm about the exhibition before they left campus. But the no of the pandemic prevailed. Weeks later, a few scholars requested permission to come to campus to retrieve their essential art making tools, their tools. The answer had to be a painful no. How are artists to prevail without their tools? So earlier, I, I mentioned the unseen skills. And I mean those skills that will become more apparent with time. We know what these students lost, but what? from the experience of reaching a height of individual achievement and dizzying creative and affirming social possibility only to abruptly be distanced from it. What, we ask, was gained? How in the world did they recover from the blunt contrast of it all? And what are the skills they drew upon to continue making art? Let us applaud these young artists for their current work and join me in congratulating them for finding the tools necessary to contend with and even flourish in the face of adversity. We look forward to seeing the art they make and the lives they lead in the future. And the Irwin scholars are Aaron Martinez, Anastasia Olison, Angel Gonzalez, Chloe Murr, Dominic Ramirez. Edgar Cruz, Emma McQuaid, Jocelyn Lee, Joshua Zupan. Morgan Tomfor. Natalie Del Castillo. Rodrigo Ramos. Barish Blackwell. And now we'll have a collective statement from Varish and Chloe. We would first like to acknowledge that right now, as we are meeting here, there is a Black Lives Matter protest taking place in Santa Cruz, and we extend our support to those taking action and amplifying Black voices. Echoing the recent message from the Black Student Union at UCSC, not only do we mourn the deaths of Nina Pop, Brianna Taylor, Tony McDade, 
Ahmaud Arbery, and George Floyd, but the countless deaths of Black people lost during the COVID-19 pandemic as a result of institutionalized racism. Furthermore, we would like to recognize all the Black members of the LGBTQ plus community, especially trans folks who have needlessly died and are continually left out of the narrative. We must do better. We affirm all those who are taking action to speak out against injustice, police brutality, and white supremacy, those who are advocating for justice and our futures. Art, at its core, is about imagination and creation. When someone dares to imagine an alternative future, they have the potential to create it. In a revolution, the first step is imagining that things could be different. We must all find a role within the movement and to begin striving towards that potential future. Every uprising, movement, or revolution needs artists. Artists draw attention to the injustices at hand and make crucial information accessible and digestible. Art has the power to make people pay attention and care. We understand that our role within this movement, that we are artists among many other things, but we encourage you to take the time to find your role. For some, that may mean joining the action at SCPD tonight at 8 p.m. And for others, that may look different. That being said, we are brought together this evening due to the unparalleled generosity of the Irwin family. We encourage all of you who have the means to find that same generosity in your hearts to financially support all those putting their lives on the line to fight against the white supremacy currently fueling the state of our country. That concludes our collective statement. I would now like to introduce Aaron Martinez. Hello, everyone. First, I would like to say some words in Spanish. Um, a toda mi familia le quiero dar gracias por siempre apoyarme, especialmente a todos los que se encuentran en México. Gracias por su apoyo y todos sus, todos sus buenos deseos siempre han sido motivo para mí para poder seguir adelante y llegar a ser alguien que ustedes quieran y respetan como persona, como humano y sobre todo como familia. Um, now I would like to say first, uh, I would like to thank my uh, professors at UC Santa Cruz, Carolina Karlik and Norman Locks. Thank you guys for all the support you have given me, all the advice. I really appreciate it. It's something that I will take with me for the rest of my life. And finally, I would like to say that um, the project that I did for this Irwin 2020 uh, Collective Solitude Show is dedicated to my friend, Wendy Carrera. Um, I know that these have been difficult times, not just in the, for the situation that's happening around the world, but with your situation in particular. Profe, just know that I'm here for you and that whatever path you walk, I, I will walk it with you. I'm with you and your family. I love you, G's. También amo a toda mi familia. Gracias por, por el apoyo. Gracias a mi papá y a mi mamá por siempre estar conmigo, a mis hermanos. And now I would like to welcome Anastasia Olson. I think you're muted, Anastasia. Unmute, sorry. So my grandpa died last week and I want to say some words for him. Um, he was a person who was full of love. He was one of the most patient people in my life. And even though we didn't always get along, um, I aspire to be like him. I also wanna say thank you to Shelby and Louise and Colleen uh, for your unwavering support and hand holding up to the last minute. It means a lot to me. Thanks to the Irwin family, without um, your support, none of this would be possible. Thank you to my mom and Sean Monahan for letting me take over your spaces um, and kind of tear them up a little bit. Um, and then thank you to my fellow Irwin uh, scholars because you guys were very inspirational to me. Um, if I'm gonna say one thing about my piece, it's that um, it's a reflection on breath and anger through the uh, esoteric symbolism of the sword. The word anger has a root called ang. It's a really old proto-Indo-European root that means constricted, tight, painful. I think it's really important for those of us who can to be able to open up our chests and to focus on breathing whenever we can. 
Um, that's what got me through this quarter. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce Angel Gonzalez. So first off, I just wanted to start by thanking the Irwin family for this opportunity. Um, the first person I need to thank is Bridget Henry. Your intro to printmaking class changed my life and I've always appreciated your guidance and support over these last few years. I can't thank you enough for all that you've done for me and for being the world's greatest boss. Louise, Shelby, and Colleen, you guys have been the most encouraging people ever throughout all the craziness. You guys made it work. You answered my countless emails and reassured me that everything was going to be okay, even when I didn't really believe it myself. <laughs> Thank you to Enrique Leal, Jennifer Parker, and Jameen Lee for fostering my love of art and encouraging me to create every day. You guys have had a huge impact on me and countless other students, especially right now when we're navigating creating art during a pandemic. Um, Cindy, Bryce, Quinn, and Gwen, thank you for the endless jokes and emotional support. You guys really kept me going this quarter. Alicia, Alejandra, and Ella, I could never thank you guys enough for all of the advice. Your guys' work inspires me every single day. Chloe and Terilyn, your endless love and support is what has made my last two years here possible. I don't know what I would have done without you two. And a big thank you to every person that's ever walked in the print studio. You have all made this place feel like home and that's something I'm gonna cherish forever. I couldn't have asked for a show with better people and it's been amazing to create alongside everyone here. Um, that concludes my remarks. Next up is Chloe Murr. Thank you, Angel. Um, so first I would like to thank Shelby and Louise for all the work they've put into making this show a reality and its success despite these new and unusual circumstances. Um, Louise, thank you for all the studio visits, the encouraging emails and all of your caring leadership throughout this time. Um, thank you, Colleen, for all of the time spent building this amazing gallery space and your super speedy email answers to all of my questions, whatever time. Um, I'd like to thank my family who are watching from the UK, my parents, but also um, Ruby, Toby and Ellie, I love you a lot. Um, I'd like to thank Jimin Lee and Enrique Leal for their practical guidance and instruction in different printmaking classes and processes throughout my time at UCSC. Um, thank you to Rachel Nelson, Laurie Palmer and Maggie Wanda, not just for being incredibly inspiring instructors, but for challenging me and all of their students to think critically about social, historical, economic, cultural, and political contexts, and exemplifying how art and creativity can be used to bring attention to and start conversations about issues that we need to be having right now. I owe much of my ability to visualize, materialize, and articulate my own to, the class, to your classes and mentorship. Thank you, Bridget and the Print Studio Monitors for cre creating a collaborative workspace and supportive community. I've had so many good times there. And thank you to the wider print family. I've missed you a lot this quarter. Thank you to the essential workers who have continued to work with the student community living on campus throughout this pandemic, especially the custodial workers, dining hall staff, and anyone in the mail rooms and postal services for keeping us safe, keeping us fed, and for delivering all necessary and all necessary art supplies. To my dear friends. Terilyn, Angel, and Rai. Two minutes is not enough to thank you, and I just hope that you know how grateful and lucky I feel to have you in my life. And finally, thank you to all the Arwen scholars. I've had the privilege of working with most of you before, and so I'm grateful for the opportunity to do it again. And I'm blown away by the resilience and vulnerability that you have shown during this quarter. You're amazing people and truly amazing artists. That concludes my thank yous. So I would now like to in introduce Dominic Ramirez. Thank you, Chloe. Um, first, I would like to start off by thanking everyone attending this virtual ceremony. It means a lot to have all of your support, not only for myself, but for my fellow scholars as well. There's so many uh, UCSC faculty members that have helped me grow, develop as an artist in my short time here at uh, UCSC, and I'd like to express my gratitude to a few. Um, to Melissa Gwynn, I cannot thank you enough for you know your nomination and support for this prestigious award. 
you've helped me see uh, the true potential I have as an artist and as a painter. And I will never forget all the advice you've given me and all of the conversations we've shared. To Jameen Lee, thank you so much for taking a chance and accepting me into the Mokohanga program last summer. It was with your help that I was able to experience such a life-changing event. You have taught me so much and I will be forever grateful to you. To uh, Frank Galuska, thank you for your wise words and encouragement over the past two years. Uh, you taught me a lot about how to think about art making and you know how to go about making it. And I only wish I could have taken more classes with you. Uh, thank you to all my fellow peers that I've been able to meet here at this university. You all have made my time here unforgettable and wherever life takes you, I wish you the absolute best. I would also like to thank my friends and family for all the support they have given me, especially my beautiful and talented girlfriend and fellow scholar, Morgan Tompor. I would not be here where I am today if it weren't for her undying support. And last but not least, I would have uh, a special thanks to the Irwin family and everyone at the Cezanne Gallery, Louise, Shelby, Colleen, you know, you guys put on this virtual ceremony together. And I know it wasn't easy, but you guys did a fantastic job. Uh, so that's it for me. And now I would like to introduce the next scholar, Edgar Cruz. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you, Dominic. Um, my name's Edgar. Thank you all so much for being here. It really means a lot. Um, being from South Central LA, uh, going to college was a big thing for me and my family. And as an about to be first generation college student or college graduate, I mean, um, I'm grateful for my family and the support they've given me um, to study what I love. Uh, finishing school is a big thing for me and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my mother and all the sacrifices she made as a undocumented immigrant and a single mother. Um, thank you to Shelby, Louise and Colleen for making this virtual show possible. They've offered so much guidance and support this quarter and I just wanna acknowledge their hard work into the show. Looks really amazing, and I hope we can keep in touch in the future. I also want to thank the art department SRA staff for keeping the studios running and just offering support. Jack Chapman, Natalie Brescia, Jay, Bruce, Lucas, and Bridget, thank you all for offering support and guidance always and, and just, just being there. Um, I want to give a big thank you to my photography professors, Carolina Karlick and Norman Locks for always supporting me and pushing me to work hard and take advantage of all the possibilities we have as artists here. Uh, thank you for taking the photo students to Big Sur and the Mojave Desert for our photo research trips every quarter. They're like the highlight of my time here and I'm so grateful that you, you gave us that opportunity, that very unique opportunity. Um, I'd also like to thank Lori Palmer, Jameen Lee and Enrique Leal for always offering support and guidance on my personal work, especially in these confusing times. Thank you to the art department here at UCSC. The community in the art department is unlike any other. And I'm grateful that I found a home here with other hardworking artists. Um, quiero darles gracias a mi familia que está aquí desde Oaxaca, México, mis abuelos, mis tíos y mis tías, mis primitos. Gracias por todo su apoyo. Y los quiero mucho. Finally, I'd like to thank Natalie for being a freaking collaborator and just being the main source of inspiration um, in my work since we've met. We work really hard together this quarter on our cyanotypes and my work would not be possible without her support. And now I present to you, Emma McWade. Thank you all so much. Hey everyone, this is Louise, the gallery manager. Um, Emma couldn't be here with us. She's out uh, at the protest. And so she's pre-recorded her remarks, which I will now share with you all. So bear with me one moment as I cue this up. Hi everyone, um, thank you all for being here. This is so strange that I don't get to see any of your faces, but I appreciate everyone showing up for us and supporting us. Uh, I wanted to give a special thank you to my parents for supporting me through everything and pushing me to keep going even when things are as difficult as they are currently. Um, I wanted to thank my art professors, Carlina Karlick, Norman Locke, Lori Palmer, 
and D. Hibbert Jones. Um, especially Carolina, who pushed me through my very first darkroom class. Um, I wanted to quit so bad. I hated it. <laughs> um, and she just encouraged me to keep trying. And she gave me some extra film and told me, you like basically just didn't let me quit. So if it weren't for her, I highly doubt that I would be here today. So thank you. And a huge thank you to Louise and Shelby for putting this all together. Um, really appreciate you all for your support. Um, and my sister, Bridget, for being my biggest fan. And my best friend, Diego, for supporting me through absolutely everything and being there for me no matter what. And that's all for now. Um, next up, we have Jocelyn Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my work has always been about San Francisco and home, but none of it would be possible without the love and support of the family in my home. Um, thank you for all your good morning texts and skipping weekend visits home so I could have precious full days in the print studio. Thank you for adjusting to the chaos of my premature return to living at home and dealing with the many messes, materials, and half-finished projects I've left all around the house. Finally, thank you for encouraging me to pursue art after seeing the community and joy I found in it. It's rare to have parents so supportive of their child pursuing the arts, but I think my second STEM degree might have helped. I'm the first person in my family to graduate from college and it was completely made possible by my parents. I'd also like to thank the Irwin family because without them, we wouldn't be here. The annual Irwin Scholar Exhibition is my favorite event in all of the art department and not because of the usual fancy cheese they serve, but because it's a celebration of the arts and it brings families and friends together. The Irwin Scholarship and Grants help bring so many beautiful, thoughtful, and impactful art pieces to life. And I can't thank you enough for your support of so many talented artists at this school. I'd also like to thank my professors and mentors who got me here today. Jameen Lee, Enrique Leal, Dee Hibbert Jones, Laurie Palmer, Bridget Henry, and Amy Franceschini. Not only have you shared your infinite wisdom and art with me, but you have also taken the time to get to know me, my art and my art practice. And I think we've all really um, fostered meaningful relationships that have inspired not just my art practice, but also how I want to give back to my community. I often struggle with overextending myself and take too many classes, but you, are, but you all are such incredible thinkers and educators that I couldn't bear to not be in a class and learn and talk with you. On the rare occasion that I get out of the print studio, there's Jay and Lucas in the wood shop, Bruce in the metal shop, Natalie and Jack in the cellar, and Jason, Jude, and Hannah in the office who are infinitely patient with all my questions. They have gotten me out of jams and brought me creative dreams to life, and I'm going to miss your smiling faces in our talks in between walking to and from the, stu the studios. A huge thank you to Shelby Graham, Louise Leong, and Colleen Jennings for helping us put together this show. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us, listen to us, and show us all the possibilities of the virtual space. It's really amazing what you've done and how you've been able to do our work just justice in the virtual space and share it with so many people. Um, finally, a huge thank you is owed to the Irwin Scholars and my friends of the print studio, my friends from back home who make the effort to support me from wherever we are in the world, and my sisters in Society of STEM Sisters. You have made my college experience toothachingly and heartbreakingly sweet, and I will particularly miss walking into the print studio and being greeted by the communal snacks and a dozen smiling faces. Thank you always for the good music and good company. I don't think you could find anywhere else on campus at 10 p.m. that's full of people working away like at Santa's workshop like we do. There are so many of you that I've spent countless hours within the studio, and there are so many people I wanted to name and thank that I realized everyone in the studio is so dear to me, and I love you all. Thank you to everyone who wrote me letters, and I'm sorry um, they didn't make it into this show. Life under quarantine comes at you faster than you expect it. The piece will definitely be completed, though, by the time we have our physical show, so you'll all just have to come back for that one. Thank you. I love and miss you all, and invite everyone to get involved with this upcoming election and educating yourselves on local initiatives and finding out who your elected officials take money from. Thank you. Up next is my very good friend, Joshua Zupan. <laughs> Thank you, Jocelyn. Also my very good friend. Thank you. Um, sorry if this goes over my two minutes time. 
I just have a lot of thank yous. <clears throat> now let's play a game of will I cry in front of 180 people or not. Um, first of all, thank you to the Irwin family for this incredible opportunity. Um, thank you to Shelby, Louise, and Colleen, and everyone else on the back end whose faces you don't see on the posters, but who put in countless hours to make this exhibition happen. Thank you to my mentors in all things art, Jameen Lee, Enrique Liao, and Bridget Henry. You've all robbed off on a very hopeful generation of printmakers with your oceans of knowledge and experience. And the gratitude all of your students have for you is unprecedented. Um, also a big thank you to my printmaking family and everyone in the studios for being the backbone to my art practice. Thank you for your ceaseless, the ceaseless passion you instill in me and for staying awake to unhealthy hours of the night or the following morning uh, together in the studios. You're some of the hardest working people I know and you fill me with the joy for making art. Last but not least, certainly, uh, thank you to my family and friends, to my grandma and grandpa, my parents and step parents for supporting my decisions to pursue a field fraught with obstacles and instabilities. An extra special thank you to my mom for your number one all time love and understanding. Thank you to all my siblings, all 10 of you. Yeah, there's 10 um, for being the biggest inspirations in my life. Thank you to my friends, peers, and my kooky housemates who I can hear screaming downstairs. Uh, thank you, my close friends, Jack, Grant, Maddie, Noah, Duncan, Eli, Jocelyn, all of you, and so, so many others that I can't fit on this list uh, for being my confidants and strong supports. And thank you, uh, finally, to Hannah for your never-ending hopefulness and excitement and all-around uplifting attitude. Um, I'll close with a few thoughts I had about the role of artists and art. Uh, the role of an artist in the world has probably and will probably always elude me with its changing throughout history as new techniques and tools are developed and it's shifting through various social, political, historical, or personal contexts. Um, despite that, I do see one commonality and that is the role of a humble and thoughtful effector. The role of the artist is one who takes it upon themselves to listen and share ideas with anyone, not for personal gain, not for academic prowess, or money, but for the simple certainty that they might affect someone for the better and hopefully learn something themselves too. Uh, I don't believe art requires dense reviews in university papers. I don't believe art requires money or status. I don't believe art has to be happy and I don't believe it has to be sad. These things pigeonhole the experience of art and none of them will legitimize an object or an idea into an artwork. I do believe art requires empathy, thoughtfulness, firsthand experience, hard work, brutal honesty, and an ability to gracefully balance on the tightrope between control and chaos. Artists don't have the answers to the big questions or solutions to the problems of the world, but artists do have the ability to approach these things uniquely. And I hope to one day make art that can do this. Thank you everyone. Um, and that concludes my remarks. I'd like to introduce Morgan Tom for you. Thank you, Josh. Um, I would like to express my deepest heartfelt gratitude to my family for always supporting my dream of becoming an artist, even if it doesn't make sense sometimes. Um, my friends for always supporting and encouraging me, uh, even if we're far away. I love you, Sawyer. I love you, Nicole. Uh, my professors for pushing me to explore and create and open my mind and work hard. Um, specifically, a huge thank you to Melissa Gwynn for uh, believing in me encouraging and inspiring me to reach uh, my full potential in painting. Um, thank you so much for nominating me. Um, I also want to thank Jimmy Lee for her excellence and passion for teaching printmaking. Um, her love for Intaglio no doubt inspired me in my own practice. Um, it was such an honor to be a part of your Mokuhanga group. And thank you for leading a fantastic trip through Japan. <laughs> thank you to Frank Galushka, whose kindness and grace truly helped me embrace abstract painting. I wish I could have taken more classes with you. Um, and I wanted to give special thanks to Marcelo Viana Neto and Shimul Chowdhury from the games department. Um, thank you for letting me into your classes and believing in my work. I also want to express my deep gratitude for everyone who worked so hard to put the show together, especially Shelby, Louise, and Colleen. Um, and a special thanks to the Irwin family for providing this amazing scholarship for so many years. Finally, I want to express my heartfelt love and appreciation for a very special person, um, a fellow Irwin scholar who not only helped me stay in the studio, but helped me grow to be a better person over the past four years and hoping for many more. I love you, Dominic. 
I give my gratitude to all the people who have supported me in my journey. Uh, lots of love to this wonderful little group of Irwin scholars. Thank you so much. Um, that concludes my remarks, and I would like to introduce Natalie Del Castillo. Um, thanks, Morgan. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming out. And I'm Natalie Del Castillo, and incredibly honored to be a part of this team of amazing, hardworking artists. I'd like to thank my mom and papa for supporting me in all my endeavors and raising me and my sisters with endless love. Um, you guys mean the world to me. Thank you to my professors, Carolina Karlick and Norman Locks for putting on the photo research trips to the Big Sur and Mojave Natural Reserves. Um, even when this past Mojave trip was canceled in the fall, Carolina and Jack Chapman encouraged myself and three other photographers to continue and go down south to make the trip happen. Um, thanks to Professor Enrique Leal for being curious about alternative art practices and instilling that in myself. Um, also, a shout out to SRAs Bruce Kirk, Jay Gatson, or Jay Gatson, and Jack Chapman for being the guiding hands of not only my own um, practices and aspirations, but being that hand for um, everyone else, uh, everyone that's um, an art student at Santa Cruz. Um, Though none of us could have anticipated our last quarter to be spent like this, I'm really glad that Shelby Graham, Louise Leong, and Colleen Jennings have been able to pull off such an amazing virtual show. Um, thank you guys for putting in um, all the hours that have gone unseen and also seen to make this happen. Um, a special thank you to Porter Dining Hall and all the crew there for keeping me fed and providing me with a sense of family. Um, you can't really find that just anywhere. Um, thank you to everyone that I have not been able to name because I'm short on time, but Thank you to everyone for reaching out and checking in and making yourselves available. Um, the UCSC Arts Department has given me nothing but love and support and has made me thankful to be surrounded by a loving community in these turbulent times. So Technet, a group of art makers at UCSC and the employees of Porter Dining Hall have made this place my home. And though I can't hug any of you, just know that I really love and appreciate every single one of you. Um, that concludes my portion. Thank you again. And next, I would like to introduce Rodrigo Ramos. Thank you, Natalie. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone joining us today, and a huge thank you to those that continue to support what I do. I'm a Chicano artist with the purpose of filling in the gaps through my art. And by gaps, I'm referring to what's excluded in, uh, in the education system in terms of Chicanx learning. My work calls for a resurgence of Chicanx pride, and it could not have been highlighted in this year's Irwin exhibition without the support of my partner, close friends, family, and professors. Thank you to Carolina Karlik, Katie Perry, and Enrique Leal for all of your guidance. And a final special thank you to the Irwin team and, and the Irwin family. And with that, I introduce Barish Blackwell. Hey, everybody. Um, so I'm the last person, which is cool. But um, I started working at the Cezanon my sophomore year in 2018. And I actually, the first show that I fully worked on was the 2018 Irwin show. And I fell in love with the concept. It was so amazing to see such beautiful works from students. And it was my first time really feeling like I was a part of the art community at Santa Cruz. Um, it was just really cool to see people mingling around and talking about the work. And it really inspired me to get more involved in the art community and start talking to professors and hang out in the art department more. And so, you know, the Cezanne was kind of the catalyst for my trajectory in the art department. So I just want to start with that. And it's really cool that I started at the Cezanne and now this is kind of like my last act in um, the UCSC art department. And it, um, it's just like a nice full circle situation. Um, but moving on to my thank yous. Um, first of all, Irwin family, thank you so much for your generosity. Um, not only monetary support, but believing that art is something that should be funded. And, you know, it's one thing to give someone money to create art, and it's another thing to sit them down and tell them, hey, your art is worth making. You know, it, it feels really good to be recognized in that way, and I really appreciate it. Um, thank you to my family for raising me to appreciate the arts. We have tons of artists in our family. Um, both my parents were dancers. You know, I was raised knowing that art is important and it matters and it's worth spending time on and I really appreciate that. And also really appreciate being supported 
throughout my whole life in supporting art. And even when I didn't want to do it or I thought it was a dead end or didn't think I was good enough, my family was always there telling me to keep going, keep pushing, telling me my art was worth making and that makes all the difference, you know? Um, thank you to Dee Hibbert Jones, my greatest um, mentor, my most trusted advisor. Thank you for never going easy on me. You're, um, you're a hard ass and I love you. Um, I wouldn't be here without you, obviously. He nominated me and has been um, motivating me and pushing me since my first sculpture class, actually. Yeah, it's like, this is the most, first sculpture I made in Santa Cruz in Dee's class, and I still have it, and I love it. Thank you, Dee, you're the best. Um, I'm planning on consulting you with our projects for forever, and I hope that's fine with you. Um, thank you to Bruce Kirk for being one of my best friends in the art department. I value our time in the metal shop so much, just listening to music, hanging out, chatting about science fiction. You're a good guy. Um, I might cry a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, Bruce is the best, you guys know. And if you don't know, you should check out Bruce. He's a good guy. Um, Jay and Lucas in the, metal, in the wood shop, really great guys as well, super helpful, always there for you. I really appreciate your guys' help. Um, and even just like when I wasn't working in the wood shop and I was doing metal stuff, just popping my head in and saying, hey, what's up? It just brightened my day. And I really appreciate you guys having such good energy and always um, being there, you know? And to all the art administrators, Jude, Jason, Hannah, thank you so much for all the emails, really making this happen. Um, artists are scatterbrained people. And without you, none of this would happen. There is no way a department would run without people behind the scenes coordinating. Um, so thank you so much for doing that. Jude, I miss coming in and getting candy and chatting. Uh, I'm staying in Santa Cruz, so maybe that'll be able to happen before I leave for the next year, but um, miss you. And thank you to the art students, you guys, my peers, my Irwin scholars. Um, I love you all so much. You're the, my biggest inspiration. Um, Every Open Studios is my favorite day of the quarter. I love seeing all your guys' work, chatting about art, just hanging out. Um, really miss it a lot. And thank you to all the people who are tuning in and watching from home. We love you all. It's really awesome that you taking the time out to support us. Um, even though you can't be here physically, it means a lot, means a lot that you're here online. And finally, thank you to Shelby, Louise, and Colleen. You guys really made it happen. And when we find out, found out we weren't going to be able to have our physical show, we were all really bummed, obviously. <laughs> But um, you guys always kept that energy and kept on motivating us and telling us, you know, this is worth working on. This is something that's valuable. And even though it's not what you thought it was going to be and it's, you know, it sucks, you just got to roll with the punches and, you know, it's still worth doing, even if it's not what you thought it was going to be. Um, so, yeah, thank you to everyone who believes in the arts and everyone who helped me believe in myself as an artist. I love you all. That concludes my thank yous. Thank you, everyone. So at this point, I would like to ask all the panelists to unmute themselves because we're going to all clap for all of you and all the wonderful remarks that you all shared with us. And I know that the attendees, we can't see you, but there are 154 people tuning in right now. And I know they want to celebrate you too. So would you all please unmute yourselves? And we're going to do a round of applause. Congratulations! Yay! Yay! Congratulations, all of you. Um, so now where we are in our program is um, I'm going to share my screen to show you the Cezanne website. And this is for all the attendees to take a look at. This is how you'll navigate the 3D gallery. Um, okay. Here we go. So this, here's the Irwin website, which probably looks familiar. It's where you all found your Zoom link. Um, and you'll notice that there's this new information here that says, see the exhibition in our virtual, virtual gallery space. So you click that and it takes you to a new page. And this has our 3D gallery embedded into it. Now, before I click into it, um, you will we'll see that there's more information at the bottom because this is a fully uh, immersive experience. Every Irwin Scholar has their own individual artist page that includes um, more photographs, their artist biographies, and also their artist statements. 
and there's no need to click back because you can just advance forward at the bottom of the page and click on to the next artist. So I, I highly encourage all of you to take a deep look into each of these artists' pages uh, because we couldn't fit every everything into our gallery space um, and it gives a really rich experience of our virtual exhibition. So when you land on this 3D gallery page, you press this play button and it takes between 30 seconds and three minutes to load depending on your network speed. So here you'll see, here is a composite of our Cezanne Gallery as well as the Porter Faculty Gallery and the Cezanne Underground Student Gallery. And you'll see all these numbers. Those are annotations for each artist. And there are multiple ways that you can navigate the virtual uh, exhibition. If you click this bottom bar here that says select an annotation, you can click it and there are a couple of different things you could do. Uh, at the beginning of our reception, Colleen shared a video that is, is similar to this autopilot. So if you click start autopilot, what it'll do is give you a tour through the entire exhibition timed. Now this is great for if you, you know, want to get an overview of everything, but um, you can take your time when you navigate it manually. So a way that you can navigate manually is this X at the upper right corner is a stop button and it'll take you back to the home page. So all of those annotations with each artist's name is listed at the bottom of this page by number. And some artists have multiple annotations because they're installed in multiple places. So when you go back into the virtual gallery, if you go to this bottom bar where it says Dominic Ramirez, or a select annotation, depending on which part of the screen you're in, you can click it and here you can scroll through and choose artists to see their work. So this is a really wonderful way to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, and again, Shelby pointed out that when you click on the annotations, it opens up more information about each piece. Um, so we did mention that we have some three-dimensional objects that are hosted on an external model. Uh, and those I, I really want to showcase so they don't get missed. So um, Anastasia's 3D model, you, the, the way to view it is you click her annotation, which is 10, and it pulls up this exploded menu that says, this sculpture can be viewed in a separate location by clicking here. So when you click here, it opens up a new tab that then loads her 3D model. So this way you can get a 360 degree view of it and see all the wonderful detail, all the work that went into this piece. And the same is also for Barish, who has two sculptures in here. So here, right now you're just seeing this, this flat image, but when you click on 17, there's another link that you click and it opens up a secondary model that includes a 3D rendering of the signs. And so when you're going about the virtual model, take your time with each piece. Uh, you can navigate manually. And if, if the annotations are distracting, you can click this bottom screen and click hide annotations. And you can view this model on a desktop computer or a smartphone. And the way you advance is on your phone by pinching and expanding much when, much like when you're zooming. Um, or when you're on a desktop computer, you, you use um, your trackpad or your scrolling ball. So, um, and if you find that this small window is a little constrained, the bottom right has an, a symbol for full screen. And when you click it, it takes you to a larger uh, immersive view. So I, I recommend that everyone take their time with this exhibition, uh, our virtual gallery, and um, yeah, really, really walk through. We have exterior pieces, uh, some installed wallpaper. We have 
um, installations in this micro gallery corner. And you can see we have we have 20 different annotations and 13 artists who all spent a lot of time adapting their physical work for the digital. Uh, so we, we really want to make sure people uh, take some time with these pieces. Um, and so our chat is open and the link to the virtual gallery will be placed there but at the very end of the night we'll also include an exit slide that has all of our our links so um, with that we're switching over to our question and answer portion um, i thank you all for for being here and spending time with us to celebrate the Irwin Scholars. So um, at the very bottom of your Zoom screen is the, the word bubble symbol that says Q&A, and you can, you can leave your questions in there and we'll be, um, I'll be moderating and sharing some of these questions uh, for all of the Irwin Scholars. And so um, I'll keep it in gallery view, and if you have something to share, please unmute yourself. Um, and so I do have a question that um, about collaboration. And so uh, a few of you were able to work with other artists within the Irwin Scholars cohort because you either lived with them or, um, you know, both were in the same town. And I wanted to ask how it was to collaborate. So specifically, I, I wanted to hear if uh, Edgar and Natalie, Morgan, Dominic, and, um, and um, Emma and Varish, if, if you had anything to share about the collaborative process. Uh, I have something to say. Um, the collaborative process, it, it, it's just really interesting to always get feedback from another person, and especially another person who you really value their artwork and you really are, you know, really just deeply interested in, in what they're making and not just what you're making and, and kind of working together. And at least for what I made for the show, like I, I don't take full credit of what I make. I think Natalie was a big part in my artistic process and sharing ideas. And, you know, I, I just like to acknowledge that, like, I don't think it's just something that I made, but it's, it's something that kind of we made together and, and we really worked together. Yeah. I have something to say about collaboration. Um, Emma and I were roommates during this process and um, we didn't actually collaborate on any actual artworks, but um, I feel like living together is a form of collaboration. You know, you wake up and you turn around and there's Emma looking at me. We're usually not, she wakes up way later than I do, so I'm looking at Emma. But, um, you know, it was just really wonderful to have someone who's going through the same exact thing physically in the space. Like, we all have each other's numbers and we could chat over, like, WhatsApp and Zoom and whatnot. But um, it was something really different about having someone in the space with you in your house who was going through the same exact thing. And we both struggled a lot with motivation in the beginning of the process, you know, being really sad and mourning, you know, the physical Irwin show because it was something we were really looking forward to for like years, you know, it's something that like a lot of art students at Santa Cruz are, it's like a coveted thing, you know, um, and then to find out that it's not going to happen in the way you think, it's kind of heartbreaking, but having Emma there and being able to like go through the, the grief process, you know, together was just really wonderful and um, yeah, it's just nice to have her around. Yeah, I'll, I'll say something real quick, too. I think what was another really helpful thing was, um, yeah, like what Varish was saying, sometimes it's, it's really um, demotivating this whole time period and the weirdness of the world right now. Um, so it's nice to have someone there to just be like, okay, today's a work day. You got to go in and go in and paint, go in and sculpt, whatever you're doing. So it was, it was really helpful to, um, you know, have another artist there instead of, it, it felt less... Um, Less of solitude, I guess. So that was fantastic. Thank you all. Um, another question, and for for everyone, is what did you learn about yourself as an artist during during this process and being in shelter in place?
I'm bad at self-motivating. Mm -hmm. and that it's important to have a separate space from your home where you do your work, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely having that space and community to go into, like the print studio was, is really, um, was really motivating and being under quarantine and really having no access to studios or equipment or materials was um, really hard. But I guess I learned a lot about um, just making the most of my situation and just kind of um, being more aware of my surroundings and really considering what I can do with um, what's presented in front of me. Yeah, I think that's another interesting aspect. I mean, what can you do with your stripped of all your studio and your tools and everything? And so I think it's interesting and really important to see what we can, what we, what we can, what we have, what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um. So, the, um, you know, thank you all for your collective statement for Black Lives and also um, Josh for your reflection. This is in, in, in tune with that. But a question that I have for all of you is, again, something that, you know, you, you are probably already asking, but what is the artist's role in the face of crisis and injustice? I kind of, I personally think that we're, um, we're almost historians in a way because people will look back on our art and they'll see what was actually happening at the time. And that's what we do now. And I don't know how things are going to change in the future, but as long as people are creating visual representations of what's going on, other people are going to be drawn to that. And it's going to act as more of a truth than whoever's writing history books. That's what I think. I want to say another thing, but I worry that I talk too much. So I'm, I'm just going to say it real quick. Um, I think the role of the artist is creating consensus. So like consensus is like general knowledge. Everything, something that like the public agrees to be true. And the artist's role is to look at that analyze it and figure out what's missing from that picture and then to bring that and make it consensus so you know the artist's role is to take a critical eye to the world around them and figure out what needs to be done and to do it you know and i think that can be said about any role actually now that i think about it but um and i also think that anything can be art i think the art the role of the artist is to think creatively and to take risks and create distances Thank you. We do have uh, a question from the audience about any prior plans that you may have each had for a certain projects or pieces and and were you able to or what was it like to adjust if you couldn't complete the project that you wanted to create? I'll say something. Um, actually, this piece here that I was working on when uh, the last quarter ended and planned to plan from the beginning to do for the Irwin show, I was going to do a lot of screen printing on top of it. Um, it's a big woodblock print, and then I was going to add that, but obviously that's a little challenging without a studio. Not impossible, but um, beyond my abilities right now. Um, but it led me to do a lot of drawing on it instead and um, learn about how these materials interact with each other. And um, yeah, it's a pretty simple thought, just that, you know, it caused me to do a lot of drawing instead, but it was really nice because it helped me realize I needed to take a step back from a little addiction to screen printing or printmaking in general and um, focus on some other things. And uh, very fun to just see how those materials interact uh, that I hadn't previously done, so. Yes, didn't get to do what I planned, but also got to do, got to learn some things, so.
maybe if if any of you have any um, last comments about any of the questions that we may have had um, you know we have a couple in the chat um, do you make art to imitate or reflect life or create art in hopes that life will eventually imitate it um, so i'll just you know leave leave a minute for each of you if you if you want to share any last words i want to be mindful of the time Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all for participating in this Q&A. And so we are shifting over to our closing. Thank you to the attendees who have been with us this, uh, this hour um, and some change. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to Irwin scholar Chloe Murr to give some closing remarks. Um, thank you, Elise. Uh, we'd just like to say a final thank you to the Irwin family for your generosity to the art department here at UCSC. Um, the annual Irwin Scholar Exhibition is always a hugely anticipated celebration that brings people together and um, to be a part of a celebration like this is, is a real honour. Um, and we would not be able to pursue our, a lot of artistic dreams that we have without the funding from the Irwin Grant and the Irwin Scholarship. So thank you for that. Um, again, we'd like to just collectively thank our families, our chosen families um, and friends. We thank you for all your love and support that has brought us to this moment. Um, to the art department, faculty and lecturers, we thank you for your mentorship and guidance throughout art our artistic studies here at UCSC. You have instilled in us a strong work ethic and supported us through thick and thin. So thank you for helping us reach our full potential. Thank you to the staff and research staff and research associates who keep our studios running. We thank you for your endless enthusiasm and patience for helping us bring our ideas to life. And finally, we've said it, we can't say it enough. Um, our endless love and appreciation to Shelby, Louise and Colleen for their guidance through this journey into the unknown. Um, thank you for allowing us to acknowledge and grieve what could have been, but um, while helping us see the possibilities of a virtual space. Um, creating while sheltering in place has not been easy, but your endless support and direction has helped bring this show to life. So thank you very much. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, all these um, heartfelt stories and reflections. Um, I really do. We, we, we're, we're with you all the, all the way and we want to keep following you. And so, um, you know, put us on your mailing list. We want to see your career in the arts and um, we're just remember we're always here so thank you everyone for joining us uh, check out our website please check out that model the virtual model and send us any comments and uh, anyway thank you so much um, take care and stay safe everyone thank you Yay. bye bye thank you Bye. Yeah, I miss you guys. Thank you all. Love you all. Love you all. Mm. Love you too. Thank you, everyone. For any attendees who may not have seen these links, here are the links for our virtual exhibition, as well as the Irwin Scholars podcast that was produced by the Arts Division and with interviews by Maureen Dixon Harrison, the director, uh, assistant director of communications. So please uh, take a screen capture, check out our Irwin website and take your time, look through all the artist pages. We thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll leave this up for a few minutes until 7.30.